Have you ever come home from a long, hard day's work, needed a Negroni, medically needed a Negroni, but been too tired to make it, and dreamt of a day when you would have a Negroni on tap in your own home? With the Dean Callan Show, we're all about making dreams a reality. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Dean Callan Show. Today, we're going to be talking about how to install a tap for cocktails in your home or bar. Now, first thing you're going to need is a keg. So, I've got a couple of different keg systems with me to demonstrate the difference in size. This is about the smallest one you can get. I think it's 1.75 gallons, or I don't know how many liters that is, like five. And this guy here is a five gallon. So, you can see. Um, both the tops basically have the same function. They've got a little opening there. You, you open out that. You've got your two different valves in and out. I'll demonstrate on this one what that means. Now, you've got an in and an out valve. In is for your gas or air pressure, and out basically runs a line to your tap. To demonstrate today, I'm going to use what is supplied with the cocktail taps that we're recommending. You've got your out valve, which is always going to be black on a Cornelius keg. That's the type of keg we're recommending. Um, now, these come in different varieties. This one here in particular has a kind of a screw piece on the end. You can see here, this is one that I prefer. It's got a little plastic uh, rubber seal or plastic seal there. And then it's got this bit here. You tighten that on. And once you've got it nice and tight, no leaks. Another variety is this one here. Same thing, except that the barb system, you simply put it on the end of the hose and tighten this bit up. Now, these don't come supplied, but I'd recommend you buy them. At the other end, I've got this very simple plastic tap. You close it, it stays closed, you open it, and out comes the liquid. With this, you're simply sticking a barb in here and tightening that on the end. Now, that might not look like your traditional cocktail tap you'd see in a bar. These are the ones I'm using here. They use the same type of system as this. There's a thread coming down there, and I've just attached a hose to them. If you wanted to get something like this, um, on the website, we're recommending you can find these types of taps, and then you can build whatever housing you want for it. This works exactly the same way as the little guy we're going to use to demonstrate. With this, all you're doing is sticking the barb in there. And then the tap works the same way, on and off. So, with that out of the way, We'll start talking about your gas. Now, today I'm going to demonstrate the traditional CO2 tank, which you would expect to see in a bar. And I'm also going to demonstrate my own little home hack, which kind of saves you on spending money on gas. And in case your wife is worried about the CO2 leaking out and gassing everyone in the room, you're safe with air. Now, bringing in the gas component, you'll need one of these. The, the system we're recommending comes supplied with one of these. And what happens there, you've got this. This screws on to your gas tank. And with the particular uh, supplier we're using, they send you two different nuts. The reason for that is that in Europe, you have one size, and in the US, you have a different size. This comes with a little pressure release valve. You pull that, and it gets any of the gas caught in the chamber out. You've got a stop valve here, and that is what you would screw your gas line onto. This one here, see the way it says order gas? What that's doing is it's letting you know how much pressure is left in the tank, the actual gas tank itself, and up here, it's letting you know how much pressure you're putting into the keg. 
you've got a little release pressure, an add pressure, turny knobby thing there. And it's as simple as that. Make sure that you tighten that on and make sure that you put the little washer in because you don't want any leaks. Now, putting that back in here, here is one I have prepared earlier. As you can see, I've got my gas tank. I've made sure I've got the right size bolt piece. I've got my little valve there. I turn that on. Gas is ready. At the top of my gas tank, I'm turning that on here. And now I've got pressure into the line, as you can see. Right, now, if I want to dispense my cocktail, in the, making sure I'm using the out, I pull the lock back so that the ball bearings are exposed, click it on and push down. And now that won't come off. This guy here, I tend to pull up on it to try to make sure that the rubber seal is all the way around. Close it and then attach the gas like so. Now, it's important to check this. As you can see, the seal's not perfect there, so I'm going to take that off, release any pressure, and open it again. For me, if I have problems with the pressure, I just see whether or not I've put it the wrong way around. If I have, now, Attach my gas again. Let it start to fill. When you can't hear any noise, you know it's working. And there. Now we know we've got pressure. So, if there were liquid in here, the gas pressure forces any liquid out. And that is how to build a cocktail tap at home. Obviously, whatever type of tap you want, you can use on here. Um, this is great, actually, for small house parties because you can do up a whole cocktail tap ice up a bunch of glasses, and go bosh, 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 Negronis. I prefer to use these taps. And I prefer to not have to pay for gas all the time. So I'm going to teach you a little hack. Now, first of all, I'm going to undo my outline. Put him over here. Undo my gas line. Turn off the gas. Always turn off the gas. Turn off the gas here as well. And put him down there. Now, the home hack that I have built is to buy a little airbrush comp compressor. And what this guy does, it's designed to compress air from the ambient air and put it into tiny little paint jars. And then you would normally release the pressure and the paint, spray paint sprays, sprays out. Blah, blah. You would normally release the pressure and the paint sprays out and you make a mural or whatever. But what I'm gonna do with it today, I have taken my inlet valve, the little gray one, and what I've done is I've cut the little hose or the compressor. I've exposed the thread and then I've just very gently forced that on. Now, it's really annoying, finicky work. It takes a while. You just need to massage it on. It helps if you put it in a bowl of hot water, whatever. It's really annoying. Once you've done it once, you never have to do it again. Once it's on there, and it's on there all the way to the end, you just roll that back, and 
as I demonstrated before, I like to put these guys on the end, put your collar on there, tighten that up, it's never gonna come off. And now you've got an inlet for compressed air. So, this time we talked about having a Negroni at home. Release the pressure, always releasing the pressure. Open this guy. And take best quality sweet vermouth you can find in your home. Put some of that in there. Best quality gin you can find in your home. Gratuitous plug, gin. What, what are we gonna use, what are we gonna use? Oh, that's right, it's Campari. Right. And some Campari. Throw that in there. Now, we've built the cocktail. We're gonna pour it into here. We're gonna do our best to make sure that this seals. Same process as before. Put it on, try to make sure that rubber ring is connected. You don't want it leaking, otherwise you'll lose pressure. <coughs> Click it down. This time, put this guy on and this, not too expensive. And to be fair, I've used it quite a bit in my home bar. I've had it about two or three years and it hasn't broken down yet. I've also traveled with it because you're not traveling with gas. You can just wrap that into your clothes. You bring this with you, as you can see, it'll fit in a suitcase. And one of those tubes with this piece, one of those taps, they're only 15 pounds. I'll put a link to the taps that I'm using. This clicks on and you can see that's your Negroni. Now obviously there's gonna be some air trapped in that. Good thing about this little guy is that when I go to pour myself a Negroni, See if I've got some ice at the ready. Here at the Dean Khan Show, we don't really plan stuff. <laughs> just we just do stuff. Now, which one did I tap that up to? Let's let's hope it's this one. Oh, it looks like it is. And yep, there you get that air out. And there you go. That is how simple it is to build a Negroni on tap. It's like you could have it in your own home. So simple. Now we've done it. Oh, yeah. Cover one more thing. Basically, if you want a carbonated drink, don't forget this. Use the CO2, not this that won't carbonate your drink. What you're trying to do if you want to make a carbonated drink, you're charging with the CO2, this guy here. Now, just by tapping it up to CO2, it's not going to make the drink carbonated, right? It's just going to use gas to put pressure in. I would recommend you take this off. Sorry about the mess. You put the liquid that you want in. Don't fill it all the way to the top. Fill it to about the halfway. Charge it with gas, release a little bit of that gas because the CO2 sits at the bottom. So the air pressure is going to be slightly more at the top. There's no science behind that. It's just a gut instinct that I've got. It seems to work for me. Charge it again, let that gas go in. You've got it about halfway up. The rest of it is now CO2. You want the liquid to be as cold as possible and then shake it. That's why this size shake, this size uh, keg is brilliant because if you're making a carbonated cocktail and you've got you know, yay much in there, it's nice and easy to shake it up, get the ingredients as cold as possible. For some reason, call it science, um, CO2 tends to dissolve into the liquid better when it's cold, and away you go. Um, otherwise, if you just want traditional old, heavily aerated, undiluted Negroni, Oh, we're not supposed to be drinking today. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking tastes good. Uh, whatever. <laughs> we went a whole day. We did a whole yesterday. Cool. 
And um, we're done. We should have been done ages ago. <laughs> it's all right, it's got a nice kind of...